Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. I want to encourage you, if you've not already, to check out my superhero comedy novel series, The Adventures of Powerhouse. If you love the 1960s Batman or the Tick animated series, I think you'll like The Adventures of Powerhouse. In it, a, a super... Hero fan is granted superpowers and comedy ensues. Uh, the adventures begin with Tales of the Damn Knot and then continue into the Adventures of Powerhouse uh, main series. You can pick up the Powerhouse Heroic Adventures bundle as an ebook or audiobook, which gives you the first three powerhouse novels for a single low price. It's available at audible.com or the iTunes store for the audiobook portion and as an ebook wherever fine ebooks are stored. And you can find all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks at store.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date, October the 8th of 1946. And this one is The Kennel Club Murder. <laughs> proudly announces the best of show. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. This, uh, this year's best of show award is unprecedented. This year, the best of show goes to uh, two dogs. Yes, I said two. Two champion boxers. Mrs. Marilyn Lawrence's Angel and Spartan of Buddy. Will you come here to accept your award, Mrs. Lawrence? Oh, fine, fine. Here you are, Mrs. Lawrence, and congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Carlton. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet. Before we bring our show to a close, I have several announcements about next year's show and the several sectional shows which will Mrs. take Lawrence. place. Oh, Mr. Ellington, how are you? Defeated, of course, but aren't we all except you? Congratulations. Why, thank you. And now I'd like to make you an offer. An offer? Yes, I'd like to buy Angel and Spartan. How much? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ellington, but Angel and Spartan aren't for sale. I'll make you an interesting offer. No, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. Ellington. Angel and Spartan are not for sale as long as I live. No. Oh. Well, that gives me encouragement, Mrs. Lawrence. Who knows how long any of us will live? And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Here are the details of that report coming in on the police teletype now, Inspector Faraday. Thanks, Rollins. Let's have a look at it. Ah, they got the dead woman's name now. I'll read it. Let's see, it says, Ad Society Matron Slane in Riverview Mansion. The dead woman is Mrs. Marilyn Lawrence. Famous breeder of dogs. Wealthy widow. Two boxer dogs. Angel... And Spartan of Huntington tied for best of show at Kennel Club this afternoon. Two champion dogs, only witnesses. Robbery, not motive. Death, instantaneous. Bullet, 38 caliber. E and D. Yeah, that's the end, all right. Yeah, the end of that report and the end of Mrs. Lawrence. But just the beginning for us. Come on, we got work to do. Angel, here, girl. 
<laughs> come get your food. Here, Spartan, come get yours, too. Now, eat it, both of you, every bit of it. Good morning, Miss Lawrence. Oh, Mr. Wellington. May I come in? If you don't mind, I'd rather not see anyone this morning. After what happened to Aunt Marilyn last night, I... Yes, that was dreadful, but that's partly the reason I'm here. Oh, please, Mr. Ellington, I'd rather not see anyone today. Inspector Faraday from the police was here last night for hours. I've had no sleep, please. How distasteful it must be to have police in the same house with two champion dogs. You really don't mind if I come in and admire the animals, do you? Say, hold on. Martin, quiet. Well, quiet now, quiet down. Well, those dogs certainly don't like me. Uh, hold them back. Well, I, I'm doing my best. It isn't that they don't like you. They always bark their heads off when they see someone for the first time. But never after that, Angel. Martin, down, down. I think down, they're being nasty because they know you hate them, Miss Lawrence. Oh, get out of here, Mr. Ellington. I can't hold them any longer. You think I'm afraid of mere animals? Oh, get off me! They've me! Help! Angel, down! They're killing my clothes! Martin, down! Help! Down, Do something! Angel. They're down. killing me! Down! Put I'm on doing... their collars! Pull! I'm doing my best! Get them off before they kill me! Oh, 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 Angel! Oh. Down, down! Away now! Go away! Go oh. away! There! Oh. There, that's better now. Now, quiet uh, down. The stupid quiet. animals. Uh, are you are you badly hurt, Mr. Ellington? No, but my clothes are in shreds. I wanted to get those animals once, but I don't anymore. Well, that's not strange, Mr. Ellington, considering the fact that it's quite apparent they wanted to get you. Oh, hello, Blackie. Come on in. Thanks, Mary. Well, all set for dinner? No, not quite. We'll have to wait a few minutes. I have company. Company? Well, I don't see anyone here. Come look in the kitchen. What is this, a joke? No, it's, uh, it's two of them. Only I don't think you'll call them jokes. Come and look. Well, come on. Mary, if this is a gag, I'll... <laughs> Holy mackerel, what is this, a kennel? Just temporarily. This is Angel and this is Spartan. They won best of show at the kennel club yesterday. Well, what are they going to do today? Use me for a bone? No, they don't mean you any harm. You're just new to them. That's why they're barking. Well, I think I'll stay new to them and also away. Come on. All right. Where did you get those undersized oxen, Mary? I found them. Found them? How did you miss them? Well, I did find them. They ran away from the Lawrence estate, and Linda Lawrence is coming for them any minute now. Linda Lawrence? Isn't she the niece of Marilyn Lawrence who was murdered last night? Yeah, yeah, she is. I called her when I found the dogs. According to their tags, Marilyn Lawrence owned them. Oh, oh, this must be she now. Will you excuse me? Uh, Mary, <clears throat> do I look all right? She uh, is here to see the dog. Ouch. Hmm. Miss Wesley? Oh, yes, yes, of course, And You're Miss Lawrence, aren't you? W- won't you come in? Thank you. This is my sister, Beatrice. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? The dogs are all right, I trust, Miss Wesley. They certainly are quite all right. Oh, I hope they didn't frighten you when you found them. You see, they bark terribly whenever they see someone for the first time. But they're not vicious. Linda, let's get the dogs and get out of here. Beatrice, please, Miss Wesley was kind enough to pick up the dogs when they ran away. Oh, really, Linda? You forgive Beatrice, Miss Wesley. She's perfectly all right. I'm sure that your sister has been terribly upset about the dogs. Upset? That's stupid animals are nothing but a nuisance. (coughs) Oh, I'm... Sorry, Miss Wesley. We thought you were alone. No, I'm the one who's alone. All right, all right. <laughs> this is Linda and Beatrice Lawrence and Mr. Boston Blackie. How, How do, you do you do? How do you do? The Boston Blackie? Well, there aren't two of us. You see, the law allows only one of us at a time. Ooh. <laughs> Linda, I insist that we get those fool dogs and leave for home at once. Just a minute, Beatrice. It isn't often that anyone gets to meet Boston Blackie. And now with what happened to Aunt Marilyn... Linda, will you do as I say? In a minute, Beatrice. Miss Lawrence, are you suggesting that Blackie solve your aunt's murder? Well, I, I'd like to ask him to try. We came to collect the dogs, not hire a detective. I'm not a detective, Miss Lawrence. Splendid. You certainly can be of no help to us. Now, Miss Wesley, if you'll just give us the well, dogs... Just a minute, we'll... Beatrice. I know you're not a detective, Blackie, but you've helped the police so many times... Couldn't you help them this time, Linda, too? for the last time... What's the matter, Miss Lawrence? Are you afraid of an investigation? That doesn't end into it. But it might if I enter into the case, is that it? Linda, if we don't leave this instant, I'm leaving without you. All right, Beatrice, we'll go. Uh, Linda, you don't mind if I call you Linda, I hope. Of course not. And you won't mind if I call at your home tonight, I'm sure? Oh, and you'll try and find out who killed my aunt. Yes, and maybe I can make the murderer say, Uncle... Good girl. 
girl, Angel. A good girl. Now lie quietly, Spartan. I know you miss Aunt Marilyn. So do I. Oh. Hi. Oh, hello, Beatrice. Did you have a nice nap? No, I didn't even close my eyes. Oh, must these stupid animals always clutter up the library? Well, Aunt Marilyn always allowed them in here. I don't see why you... You don't should... see why? You don't see why you had no right to ask Boston Blackie here tonight either, do you? Well, I see why I should. He might help. He might help. Do you know what he'll do? What? He'll turn this house inside out. He'll open up our lives, make everything about us common knowledge. Why, we'll be talked about in every street corner, Linda, in every home. You're a fool, Linda, a stupid, naive fool. Oh, fine, fine. All right, go ahead and cry. You got us into this mess, and now all you can do is cry about it. So cry. But go and cry somewhere else. Now on, things are going to be different around here, Linda. I'm going to run things. Linda. Linda, would you mind leaving? No, of course not, Peter. What have I done? What's wrong oh, shut up and leave me alone, will you? I've got a personal call to make. All right. I'll handle things around here from now on. And when I say from now on, I mean from right now on. I'll tend to things. I'll tend to everything. Hello? Mr. Preston? Yes? This is Beatrice Lawrence. Oh, yes, Beatrice. How are you? Never mind the pleasantries. Listen to me. I want Aunt Marilyn's will settled right away. Well, I'm attending to that as fast You'll as I... You'll attend to it this afternoon. You'll be out here with her tonight. Your bank doesn't keep open nights, does it? But Beatrice, You I... heard what I said. You'll be here, ready to read that will tonight. I'll do my best. You'll do better than that. You'll be here. This house is about to be overrun with detectives and policemen and investigations. I want it stopped. Oh, now, Beatrice, there's nothing I can do about that. Well, you just think of something, then. My sister invited Boston Blackie here tonight. The police are coming here again. I want them out of here, do you understand? I want them out of here, and I want them kept out. <laughs> Miss Lawrence, I... Hey, don't let those dogs get me. Don't they know I'm a policeman? Maybe they don't believe it any more than I do. Hi, Faraday. Blackie, so you're here, too. What are those dogs barking at me for? Just because you're you, Faraday. Quiet, Angel, quiet. Be still, Spartan. Good boy. Good night. Where do they come from? <laughs> they live here. They live here? Oh, that's right. You didn't see them when you were here last night, did you, Inspector Faraday? They were outside. Uh, that's a good place for them. And a good place for you, too, Blackie. With you inside, outside is a good place to be, and... You'd better stay inside, Faraday. Miss Lawrence knows a lot about animals. Maybe she could teach you to think. Well, I wish somebody could teach me how to get rid of you. Oh, what would you do for a head if you got rid of me? You'll find out you've got a head, Blackie. Because in a few minutes, you're going to land Gentlemen, on it, Gentlemen, please. You probably disturbed my sister Beatrice. She's upstairs, trying to sleep. Sorry, Linda. Ah, uh, sorry. Blackie, you were asking me some questions before the inspector came in. Had you finished? I had just uh, one Wait just more. a minute. I'll ask the questions around here. I have only one more, Faraday. Linda... Has anyone special come to see you since your aunt's death? What do you mean by special? Well, someone who's, well, never been here before. Well, there's Henry Ellington. He wanted to buy the two dogs. Hey, what are those dogs barking at now? Quiet, quiet, Angel Spartan. Nice boy, now quiet. It seems to me that they were barking at the name Ellington. Shh, quiet, both of you. I'm ashamed of you, both of you, quiet. Hey, I have a hunch. When your Aunt Marilyn's body was found, the dogs were with her. I think the dogs were with her when she was killed, too. They were, Blackie. They were always with her. So what? So they saw a killer. And maybe they're trying to, well, sort of tell us something with all this barking. Maybe Ellington. Look, I said that name again, and the dogs tried to talk. I mean, talk. Angel Spot, quiet. You keep quiet now. I don't know what you think about this, Faraday. But unless those dogs are barking up the wrong tree, they've got Mr. Ellington out of the limb. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Wealthy Marilyn Lawrence, owner of Angel and Spartan, champion boxers, is murdered. But there's no motive for her murder or clue to who killed her. Her two dogs were with her when she was killed and seemed to have a particular dislike for Henry Ellington, who wanted to buy them for Mrs. Lawrence. As we return to our story, Blackie walks into Mr. Ellington's kennel yard. All right, now, you! Jump that fence, blast you! Hey, what are you doing there, Ellington? Who 
are you? I'm Boston Blackie. Do you mind? I object to your sneaking into my kennel yard like this. I didn't sneak in. I walked in like this. What are you doing? Something you probably wouldn't understand. Trying to make this idiotic whippet jump that fence. Now jump, you stupid fool. Jump! Maybe you'd feel more like jumping if you didn't hit him with that whip. Maybe you'd like to mind your own business. Maybe. But I find out more minding other people's. I think you'd better leave. Not until I've found out what I want to know about Marilyn Lawrence's death. Her dogs were with her when she was killed. Yes, I imagine they were. She had them with her all the time. Yes. So you agree they undoubtedly saw her killer. I imagine. Now, what's that to me? Ellington, those dogs seem to dislike you intensely. How interesting. It's very interesting. Every time they hear your name, they bark their heads off. I think they're trying to tell me something about you. Too bad they can't talk, eh? Will you leave? I'm busy. Now, you stupid animal, I want to see you jump Just a minute, just a minute. You'll never get anywhere with a dog if you do that. Whipping is the only way to get sense into some heads. Will you please leave? Not until I've found out what I want to know. Maybe you want a taste of this whip, too. You shouldn't have done that, Ellington. I don't like whips that close to my face. Oh, let go of my arm. Oh. As soon as you let go of that whip, give it to me. All right, all right, you can have it. Good. You like to crack a whip, do you, Ellington? Well, let's see how you like it when I crack this case. Excuse me, miss, but uh, where will I find Mr. Preston's office? Which Mr. Preston, sir? There are two Mr. Prestons in this bank. I want there is a Harold cat- Preston. Mr. Harold Preston is the third door to the left at the rear of the bank, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Come in. Mr. Preston? Yes. Mr. Preston, I'm Boston Blackie. I'm doing a little investigating into the murder of Mrs. Merlin Lawrence. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, what, uh, what can I do for you? Well, there were apparently no witnesses to Mrs. Lawrence's death, but Angel and Spartan, her two boxer dogs. Mm-hmm. And? And, <laughs> well, dogs can't talk. Even if they are champions. I thought maybe you could give me some of the information, no? <laughs> uh, well, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Linda I Lawrence was... to- told me that uh, you were Mrs. Lawrence's advisor. Is that right? Oh, yes, yes. And now I'm the, uh, I'm the state's advisor. <laughs> but uh, how, how can that be of any help to you? Well, as Mrs. Lawrence's advisor, you knew a lot about her affairs and about her two nieces, I imagine. Well, yes. When you went to a home on business, was there ever anyone else there? Well, that I'm afraid I wouldn't know. I've never been there. Mrs. Lawrence preferred to discuss her business affairs here in my office. Oh, that's reasonable. Uh, tell me just one more thing. Did Mrs. Lawrence leave a lot of money? Um, a million dollars. And which of the nieces inherits, Linda or Beatrice? <laughs> well, uh, both receive an equal share. Half a million apiece. Not bad for a couple of young women. (laughs) Well, they really don't receive it in cash, if you must know. It's really left for me to invest for them. Oh. And what do you get out of this? Friendship? No, no. A a 10% fee. And it's all in Mrs. Lawrence's will, if you're beginning to get any ideas about me. You look like a man who gets ideas of his own, Mr. Preston. Even 10% of a million dollars is a lot of money. Well, I I don't think I have to allow you to insult me in my own office, Blackie. Perhaps you'd better leave. After you've told me a little bit more about yourself. I think you'd better leave. Oh, but we're just having such a nice chat here. It seems... Hey, that's an alarm bell. Is your bank being robbed? No, no. I started that bell by pressing a button under my desk. Oh. A man with a gun in his hand. Two men with two guns. (laughs) Please forgive me, Blackie. There's nothing personal in this, but this is a bank. (laughs) An action such as this is just precautionary. Never mind the plug for your bank, Mr. Preston. I opened an account elsewhere a long time ago. But before long, maybe I'll settle one with you. Nice dogs, nice dogs. Should be a whole lot nicer if you could talk. Come in. Inspector Faraday, do 
You know where Blackie is. Oh, hello, Miss Presley. Where's Blackie? I don't know, but my office isn't a missing persons bureau. Inspector, he's been gone ever since... Oh, oh, the nice dogs. What are they doing here? Same old thing, Miss Presley. Marking their jaws off every time I say Ellington. Why do they do that? Who knows? Hmm. Now, Blanky may be right. They're trying to say something. They saw Mrs. Lawrence's killer, and they're trying to tell me what it is. Oh, how I wish they could talk. Yes, but they can't, and I can't find Blanky. Don't worry. He'll show up before long. In fact, I think I know where he is. Out at the Lawrence mansion. He's trying to find out if he... Excuse me. Oh, of course. Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Blanky. Blanky, where are you? Miss Wesley's here, worried sick about oh, you. Oh, Inspector, if, if that is Blanky, please let me talk to Just him. Just a minute. Where have you been, Blanky? Just checking on something. What? Oh, Ellington? Yes, I've seen him. And somebody ought to grind him into dog feed, except I don't think the dogs would have any part of him. Look, I've found out a few very important things. What? Linda and Beatrice Lawrence inherit a million bucks from their Aunt Marilyn. You think they killed her? I thought, uh, uh, Ellington was our man. Uh, that's why the dogs hate him. Oh, never mind that now. Uh, you and Mary meet me at the Lawrence mansion as soon as you can, and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, that won't take long. But uh, why can't you tell me all about it down here? Because it'll be easier up here. Where's up here? At the Lawrence mansion. Ellington is going to be here, and Preston from the bank is going to read Mrs. Lawrence's will. But I want you and Mary to get here before they do. Okay, Miss Wesley and I will be out right away. And I'll bring Angel and Spartan, too. For a change, the dogs are going to you. Faraday, what did you do to those dogs when you had them in your office? Nothing but look at them, Blanky, and wish I could understand bark language. Well, everybody's here but Preston, Mary, Linda, Faraday, and you, Ellington. (laughs) For the time being, I'm going to have to give you a new name. I'll keep the one I have, thanks. Uh, Yeah, Blanky, everybody's here but Preston and, uh... What's her name? Beatrice. Where is your sister, Miss Lawrence? Well, Beatrice is in bed, asleep. She hasn't felt very well since Aunt Marilyn's death. Well, you know, uh, we want her down here, too. We'll wait till Preston gets here before we ask Beatrice to come down, Friday. Oh, that's probably Mr. Preston now. Good. Come in. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Mr. Preston. Do you know everyone here? No, no, I don't think so. Well, I'll introduce you around. Oh, Blackie, I know. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Preston. Well, the rest are Miss Wesley. Miss Wesley, how are you? Very happy And uh, this is Inspector Faraday. Oh, yeah, I know you too. And this is Mr. Welling, Mr. Uh, Ellison. Good heavens, what what are the dogs barking about all of a sudden? As they seem to bark every time they hear my name. That's odd. I'll tell you something stranger than that, Mr. Preston. Oh, yes? You told me in your office you'd never been in this house. Yes, that's right. Did you hear that, Faraday? Yeah. Well, did you fail to hear something a minute ago? Hey, that's right. The dogs didn't bark. Right, and get this, Faraday. By his own admission, Preston here says this is the first time he's been in this house. Oh, and that has some meaning? I I don't understand. I understand, Preston. It has a lot of meaning. It means you killed Mrs. Lawrence. Down, Angel. Down, Martin. Quiet, quiet. What makes you think Preston killed her? He doesn't know what he's talking about. He absolutely... No, those dogs know what I'm talking about. If Linda can't stop... Well, pretty soon they'll break their know. chains. They'll hold them, Linda. I'm doing my best. Don't let them get loose. They can chew a man to pieces. Stop it, Angel. Down. Down, Spartan. Get down. Oh, there's no stopping them. Help someone. Mary, get out of here. Quiet. You're going to break loose. No, no, don't. Don't. Don't, don't, don't let them get me. Don't. I Please. Can't, I can't keep them from jumping. No, stop them. I'll Angel, tell. Spartan. Keep those dogs away from me. Down. Get down, I, you. I killed her. I, I admit it. Down. Keep those dogs away. There you are, Faraday. There's your confession. Now let's get them to headquarters before those dogs tear them to pieces. Mary, did you read in the paper this morning where Preston made a full confession to Faraday? Yes, Blackie, but I didn't get to finish it. Just why did he kill her? Well, he needed that 10% he'd get for investing the million-dollar inheritance. He was almost 90000 short with his bank. Ooh. That's a lot of money, too. That's what you were checking all those hours that I thought you disappeared. Uh Uh-huh. And believe me, it was some job. I'll bet it was, darling. But just think, Blackie. If Mr. Preston had admitted that he'd been in Mrs. Lawrence's house before, you could never have proved that he killed her. I know that, Mary. 
But he had to say that he'd never been there before. Because why? Well, if he'd said he had been at the Lawrence home before, he'd have become, well, we'd have become suspicious because Linda or Beatrice would have made a liar out of him. And instead, the dogs made a liar out of him, didn't they? You know, apparently they just barked at the name Ellington because they knew that Ellington hated dogs. That's probably right. Well, those two boxes certainly gave Preston a knockout punch. You know, while we were working on this case, we thought those dogs were trying to say something by barking. But when Preston walked into that room, they called him a killer without opening their mouths. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. This book does something, and it's something that G.K. Chesterton addressed uh, about 30 years prior in his book Wisdom of Father Brown and the story The Oracle of the Dog. Oftentimes in his fiction, it would be dressed up as fiction, but a little bit more of literary criticism. And the story begins with uh, Father Brown saying, I always like a dog so long as he isn't spelt backwards. Of course, dog spelled backwards is God. 
And Chesterton has some theological points in the story, but it's also a broader criticism of mystery uh, fiction uh, when it comes to use of dogs. And when the mystery writer or detective begins to make conclusions based on assuming uh, some uh, mystical power of a dog rather than considering the actual nature of the dog which might provide the clue what a dog would naturally do and i think we saw that in the story with blackie's initial conclusion about what the dog might be and faraday picking up on that and then the actual conclusion of why the dogs were barking at ellington would be just that uh they don't know him and they tend to bark at strangers. And the fact that he did, that they didn't bark around the banker turns out to be the actual clue that solves the case. Ellington, though, is probably one of the really nasty characters on Boston Blackie. I, I found myself very rarely cheering for Blackie just to lay out a suspect in a murder case. Um, and I was just like, come on, Blackie, just go ahead and get Ellington. But Blackie, being Blackie, doesn't tend to strike out unless it's in self-defense. This is episode is also one where it's kind of challenging not having the closing credits. You know, we're left to kind of guess, if we can, who might be in this uh, episode. And I actually did have a guess for the role of Ellington. I don't know if it's right, because I don't have access to the cast list. But that voice sounded a lot like Hanley Stafford, who plays Daddy in the Baby Snooks uh, skits. But I could be completely wrong. I'm really comfortable taking those guesses, but to me it sounded like Hanley Stafford. And I'm open to someone who has evidence that shows me I'm, I'm wrong. But that's my guess, and I'm sticking with it for now. All right, listener comments and feedback now. We have a comment from Wes over on Facebook, and Wes writes, As much as I appreciate all the work you do, and as much as I enjoy every episode of Boston Blackie, I've always really hated his tortured puns. And today I finally figured out why. A character feeds Blackie some straight line, and he comes back with some punny rejoinder that's usually awful, unfunny, and feeble. But behind both the straight line and the puns is a writer who's in control of both, meaning he writes both the straight lines and the puns, and still they're just awful. Thanks for the comment, Wes. It's an interesting way of looking at it. All right, well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And uh, next Tuesday, Pursuit returns. And next Thursday, join us back here for another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.